everyone. Welcome, Rhode Island Deaf and Hard of Hearing community. Today, I'm going to talk about the 2024 and 2025 immunization guidelines. Winter is on its way. It'll be November next week. The CDC has promulgated some information and recommendations about vaccines that I want to share with you so you'll know what to do to stay safe and healthy. Firstly, we looked at the Rhode Island Department of Health statistics. They have a weekly graph that shows the incidence of COVID, the flu, and RSV. Here it is. There are three lines, three columns. The blue column represents COVID and the statewide incident is only 0.6. The orange line is the flu. And there's a little bit of an uptick since September 29th. That's common because it's winter and this is when people do get sick in the winter time. Right now it's 0.3, which is fairly low. And then the last line, the green line, is RSV. And that's a respiratory virus. It impacts the lungs. You'll notice it with your breathing. Right now, the statistics are very stable. It's a very low percentage. So that's good news for Rhode Island. Everything is pretty low at the moment. It doesn't mean you can be complacent and that you don't need to get vaccinated or not take care of yourself because it's still around. COVID is still here. You can still get it. You can get RSV. You could even get both. And so the CDC encourages you strongly to get vaccinated. There are three groups of people who should get vaccinated. Firstly, the COVID and the flu vaccine, the CDC recommends that everyone above the age of six months old get vaccinated. COVID 24-25 vaccine is what is recommended. It was released in the fall and it will suppress the COVID variants. So that was developed last year and it's recommended. Secondly, the flu vaccine. This is recommended for everyone six months old and older. And lastly, for older adults, adults who are 60 and older, the CDC recommends that you get the RSV vaccine to prevent a respiratory infection. You might have noticed that they're recommending this at age 60 rather than 65. So that's a change. And the CDC also says that if you're 75 or older, you must get the RSV vaccine. The third grouping is for infants or members of our community who are pregnant. We recommend that you talk to your practitioner, your doctor or clinic to see if getting a vaccine is recommended for you. So those are the three categories that the CDC is making recommendations for. Now I'd like to talk to you about vaccines. I'd like to take a moment to talk to you about how you can prevent contracting some of these illnesses. These messages are very similar from year to year, so this serves as a reminder of how to stay healthy. There are three pretty serious sicknesses, the flu, COVID, and RSV. There are others as well, and I'm not gonna spell them out for you, but I will put them on a slide for you at the very end of this presentation because your doctor might have told you that you have one of these illnesses. 
that isn't the flu or COVID or RSV, but something else. So I want you to be aware. Altogether, there are seven different types of illnesses you might contract. I'd like to talk about symptoms. Those are the things you'll feel when you're sick. They haven't changed over the years, but I'll go ahead and itemize them. A fever, chills, or fatigue, coughing, a runny nose, a lack of appetite, just no interest in eating at all, a sore throat, vomiting, uh, no sense of taste or smell, a headache, or body aches where your muscles are very sore, diarrhea, feeling of weakness. Those are just a few examples of some of the symptoms that you might have if you're sick. It doesn't mean you should run out and get vaccinated. You might wanna be tested first for which illness you have or consult your doctor to see if you have the flu or COVID before you go ahead and get vaccinated. You might want to check with your doctor about what med medications to take and make sure that you what you take has the right outcome for you. As always, if you really feel like you're getting worse, really seriously bad, please call 911 they'll bring you to the hospital just to make sure that you're okay because if you suddenly feel a decline in health and um, in a short period of time you may want to call 911. Now let's talk about prevention for a minute. How can you keep from getting sick? There are three basic things you can do. First of all, as I've said earlier, vaccines. They work. I'm vaccinated myself, and I can tell you it works. Another one is washing your hands frequently throughout the day, at work, at restrooms, if you go out to lunch, always wash your hands. And at home, after the restroom, using the restroom, definitely wash your hands. This will prevent germs from spreading. You want to also keep the air in your home or your office circulating. So open the windows, even if it's cold out, just open the windows a little bit or open the door a crack to have the air circulating. There's a higher chance of you getting sick if the air is not circulating and we don't want you to get those germs. Now, suppose you're not feeling well. Firstly, stay home. Don't go to work. Don't go to school, stay in your house. When you feel better, the CDC recommends that you uh, add another 24 hours to make sure that you're fully recovered before you go back to work or school or interacting with people in general, 24 hours. It used to be five days, but now they're saying um, at once you feel better, and you've been home for 24 hours, it's okay to go out again. Also, wear a mask. I see people all around me now wearing masks and that will prevent sickness. Especially if you have a weak immune system, use a mask. The other thing you can do is make sure you distance yourself from people Remember, if you put your arms out to each side, that's about six feet, and that's a good distance to keep from people. Whether you're in the store or at the bank or waiting in line, just wait a little bit farther behind, especially this winter. And then lastly, get tested. You know, you can get a free test for COVID. I did send out a postcard about that, but I'll put that information at the end of this log as well. You can order free, free tests and you'll get three. Uh, just as before, 
there are some people who are in a high risk category and they have a better chance of contracting illness. Typically that's older adults. It doesn't give an age, so I'm going to estimate about age 60 and up. Also, young kids and babies are at a higher risk for illness and people with a weakened immune system. Those of you who are immunocompromised and people who are pregnant. If you're expecting a baby, you are at a higher risk for getting sick. So if you know you're in one of those categories, talk to your doctor to make sure that you're covered. And lastly, how to get well. Let's talk about recovery. Uh, of course, I mentioned vaccines, but there are medicines as well. The CDC has a couple of groups that they want to identify for medication. Firstly, you can get antibiotics. And there's another category of medicine called antivirals. Now, antibiotics are intended to kill germs. They fight bacteria. So if you get a bacteria or a germ, antibiotics typically treat those. If you get COVID or a flu, that's a virus, and then you would want to take antiviral medications. You may also want to get vaccinated. So um, you can take the antiviral medications either before or after being vaccinated. For the common cold or even things like pneumonia, there may be antivirals that are useful for you. In order to get those med, So that's what I wanted to share with you today. If you have any questions or concerns, you can always call me at my office. My video phone number is here. Or you can email me and my email address is right here. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye everyone.